every day it will be impressed. Except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you are not part of me. Today they will shout, vampire, vampire, vampire. Eat your flesh, drink your blood, vampire, vampire. One time he stood up. He said, before Abraham I was. Ah, how old are you? How old are you? How old are you? Abraham was several decades and centuries. It's like somebody coming out to say, a young man who is very, I mean, a small boy, 32, 33, he comes out, he says, before Nam the Aziki, where I was. They will beat him. They will so beat him. But Jesus was speaking in the spirit. So they could not understand because they were not spiritual. Jesus looked at the temple. It took them 46 years to build that temple. He said, I'll destroy this temple. I'll build it back in three days. They were angry. He wasn't talking of that physical temple. He was talking of the body. It wasn't the physical temple. He was talking of the body. That this body is going to be on the earth for three days. After three days, it will rise. But they didn't understand it. That's why he said to them he said listen when he was preaching to them one time people left him there were 70 apostles who went out to cast out demons they were happy that the demons left them that the demons left the people they casted them out from and jesus said why are you happy they said we commanded demons to leave and the demons are subject to us in your name he looked at them he said don't rejoice that the demons are subject to you in my name but that your name is in the book of life my own name has end respect before god walk on your own name my name has been endorsed. Walk on your name and let your name gain a, a, a special place in the heart of God. Prominence in the heart of God. So, while he was talking to them, he said something that was very hard. From 70, 70 apostles, not even disciples, apostles. Apostle means one that is sent uh, to break grounds, to take territory. And what happened? There were 12 left. The Bible says from that period, no one walked with him. No one. And the disciples were there. And Jesus said, It is the spirit that quickened. John 6 63. The flesh profited nothing. The words I speak to you, they are spirit alive. And he turned to the disciples and said to Peter, Will you also go away? Will you also go? And they asked him, To whom shall we go? For thou hast the words of eternal life. So you have to understand that life, and I'm going to tell you the truth. The first Adam lost it in the Garden of Eden. And Jesus was the second Adam. He came to restore to us what the first Adam lost. Are you following me? On that cross, he hung on that cross of Calvary. There were two thieves on the side, on the left and on the right. There were two thieves. One thief on the right, one thief on the left. And those two thieves you know, represent the fallen man and Satan. Adam, the fallen man. Satan on one hand. You say, ah, what, what does Papa mean? The Bible says two thieves. What is he talking about? Everything you see in Bible, in the Bible, it's a typology. Adam, Satan. How do I know it was Satan? The Bible says that the thief on the left hand said to him, if you are the son of God, like they say, save yourself and save us. He was accusing him. And who is the accuser of the brethren? Satan is the accuser of the brethren. He was accusing him. And the other one said to him, the one that was accusing him, if you are the son of God, like they say, in other words, he was seeing him in the context of what he has done before. If you are the God that was powerful yesterday, there are so many of us, we are seeing God in the eyes of yesterday. The other one was seeing God in the eyes of tomorrow. He said, when you get to your kingdom, remember me. One saw him as a Jesus of yesterday. The other saw him as a Jesus of tomorrow. And Jesus corrected them and said, if you must understand how I operate, it's not yesterday, it's not tomorrow. Today, you will be with me in paradise. Guess what the other one said? When you come into your kingdom, remember me. Hear me? You only remember somebody you knew before. So Adam was saying, Adam was saying there was a connection in the Garden of Eden. A place called paradise. Remember me. So now, when at salvation, when you surrender your life to Jesus, what the second, the first Adam lost, the authority, the dominion, Jesus gives it to you. That's what the second Adam returned. But we had the spiritual warfare come in. To maintain that victory Jesus has given to you, you need to fight. As believers, we don't fight for victory. We fight from victory. Can I repeat that? We don't fight for victory because Jesus has already given us victory. But we fight from victory. Spiritual warfare is contention with unseen cosmic forces.
spiritual warfare is a daily confrontation and a contest between good and evil, light and darkness. It's a battle. Life is not a playground. This is not to threaten you or make you afraid. Life is a battle. For every anybody who is afraid of battle is only an unprepared man. Only unprepared people are afraid of battle. Every student who is intelligent loves exam. Anyone who is afraid of exam is not prepared for exams. Are you following me? When you see somebody, they say exam. Some people have, in fact, there are different kinds of fever. There's yellow fever, there's high fever, there's typhoid fever, and there's exam fever. There are people, once it's exam, they fall sick. They, am I saying the truth? They just fall sick. Once they just hear exam on the 22nd, give them five minutes, temperature. You just see their temperature will just rise. Why? They are not prepared. But those who are prepared, they look forward to exams. The reason why you talk about spiritual warfare, spiritual battle, some believers are shaking, is because their life is not prepared. But those who are on fire for God, who love God, who, they, are, they are looking forward to battles. Because they know any battle that presents itself is an opportunity for the next level. Are you following me? Are you following me? I like what the Bible says. When you study your Bible, in the book of Ephesians, when it was Ephesians chapter 6, I'm going to give you some spiritual warfare scriptures. Ephesians 6, 11 says, standing against the wiles of the devil. Ephesians 6, 13 says, withstanding. You have to stand first before you withstand. Verse 11 says, stand. Stand. And verse 13 says, having done all to stand, stand. Okay, so for those of you who are saying, Papa, I've been praying and praying and praying and praying. What do I now do? Still pray. That's what that verse 13 says. Have you done all to stand? Stand. You've done everything to be on your feet standing. Remain standing. So there is a battle going on. And there are several, when you, when you get engaged to take what is yours in life, it has to be taken from the spirit. Everything that you will enjoy in the physical has to be taken from the spirit. Jesus has paid the price. He has put them in your hand. But there is a contention in the realm of the spirit for it to become physical. For it to come from the realm of the spirit to the realm of the physical, there is a contention. There is a battle to be fought. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. In life, in life, whenever, now listen to this, listen to this, whenever you have an outstanding destiny, not everybody, I'm going to get to that, not everybody have equal destinies, even set of twins have got separate destinies, no matter how identical they appear. When the hand of God upon your life, I'm telling you the truth, whether you like it or not, there are some people who are born with a higher dimension a higher concentration of grace than others this is not prayer it's from birth you say oh, what is papa talking about jacob have i love is so have i hated they were in their mother's womb so you say ah, apostle why is predestination if you ask me i don't know it's god that's his prerogative there are some children who have gone to this world every one of them god has got a good destiny for them but there are some people who god has just picked out specially because before time, God has seen their capacity. Even before they are born, he has seen their capacity. That if this one is lifted, it will go round. But if this one is lifted, he will consume it. So let this one serve this one. If you watch Esau's life, you can see that. The Bible says Esau was a man who goes out to hunt, to kill, to hunt. Esau was a hunter. He kills to survive. He kills to survive. And that translates into what his life was characterized with the bible says his hand was against every man every man's hand was against him so god by predestination has seen capacity that is why when the man who gave them talent in matthew 25 the bible says he gave some five he gave some two he gave one one now when i saw him give talents like that i was angry that's not fair give make it uniform give five 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 no he changed the capacity the one that, they, that was given one, we saw what he did. That was why he had one. Because he had a bad heart. Even the one they gave him was still a problem. The one that had five got five more. The one that had two got two more. It was capacity. He said he gave to every man severally according to their ability. So 
So if somebody is in front of you and is so blessed, it's because God knows that he has more ability, capacity than you. So if you want to be as blessed as that person is, work on your capacity. That's all. Work on your capacity. There are some people today, God has given them a level of grace and there is nothing you can do about it. Nothing you can do about it. But the one that had just one talent, he took that talent, buried it in the earth, covered it. The Bible says he went and hid his, his, his lost money. When the Lord came, from the way he even spoke to his boss, he said, you are a hard man. You reap where you did not sow. I reap where I did not sow, and I gave you a talent? What did you do to merit it? One of the biggest problems we have in life is that people who are given privilege very soon they think they deserve it. And whenever you think you whenever you get to a point you think you deserve a privilege, you lose it. That's one of the biggest problems people have. The Bible says first Corinthians 4, verse 7. What makes you different from others? What do you have that you did not receive? If you have received it, why are you acting like you did not receive it? Whatever you are today. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 10, Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God. So, when you want to engage in spiritual warfare, our weapons, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, if you read down from verse um, 10, put on the whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God. Be strong and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. Verse 11, verse 12, and verse 13. He began to tell us on the armor of God. Now, our loins, it begins with our loins. Our loins got about with truth. Verse 13, our loins got about with truth. You see, a helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit. Every single thing that has to do with our weapon, if you look at it very well, every single from the, from, go to verse 14. Loins got about with truth, breastplate of righteousness, shield of faith, every the gospel of peace everything you see there is the scriptures so the whole armor of god is the scripture so you want to pray you want to en engage in spiritual warfare your weapons the artilleries you must possess is the scripture your adequate prompt knowledge of the scripture is what determines your victory in warfare there are warfare scriptures scriptures that are coined for warfare i'll be able to give you maybe 30 you just write these are coined for warfare luke 10 19 says behold i give unto you power over the powers of the enemies to tread upon serpents and scorpions god give you power over all the parts of the enemy and nothing that's a warfare scripture that's the warfare. Job chapter 5 verse 12. It disappointed the device of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. First Peter 5, 8 to 9. The Bible says, be sober, be vigilant for the adversary the devil goes about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Those are warfare scriptures. Those are scriptures for combat. First John chapter 5 verse 3 and verse 4 says his commandments are not grievous. Verse 4, the Bible says in verse 4 of First John, First John 4, the Bible says, Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory. When you want to engage in war, these are scriptures you release into the spirit. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, it says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, and they loved not their life unto death. These are scriptures to release in the place of prayer. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 7 says, It shall not stand, neither shall it come. To pass Isaiah chapter 8, verse 10. Associate yourself, all ye people, you shall be broken to pieces. Speak the word, it shall not stand, for the Lord is with us. Glory be to God. Those are warfare battle scripture. First John 4:4. 4, 4. We are of God, for greater is he that is in you. You have God, little children. You have overcome the world, for greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon. In fact, starting from verse 13, if you must get a proper understanding, starting from verse 13, Isaiah chapter 53, all thy children shall be taught the law of the Lord and great. When you are a woman, 
eh? and there is a contest in the life of your children this is a scripture a pillar scripture to hold on to all your children shall be taught the law of the lord and great shall be the peace of thy children am i talking to somebody here for a righteousness shall thou be established thou shall be far from oppression and the bible says for terror for it shall not come near you they shall surely gather but not by me as many as gather together against you they shall fall for your sake verse 16 says i've created the smith that blows the coals to the fire i've created the waster to destroy no weapon hey farm against you shall prosper but every tongue that rise up that is why whenever you notice that there is a battle it appears that there is a gang up against you you lift up a scripture and say you evil tongue that has risen against me i condemn you condemn somebody shall condemn i'm not here to say condemn say condemn say condemn second corinthians 10 from verse 3 to 5 he says though we walk in the flesh we don't walk after the flesh for the weapons of our warfare are not those are those are i'm giving you warfare scriptures but they are mighty when you are praying these are the scriptures you 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 put together james chapter 4 verse 7 submit yourself to god resist the devil and he shall flee he shall flee he shall flee so these are warfare scriptures that you romans 8 37 nay what shall we say romans chapter 8 verse 37 in all these things we are more than conquerors through him romans 8 31 what shall we say then if god <laughs> who these are bullets how many have you written are you writing are you writing everything i'm saying write all be writing all don't miss one just be writing them so that when F, no it can't be 13. how many huh? how many 15 13 huh? 18 is good glory to god so when these are pillar scriptures matthew chapter 10 verse 1 god gave them power over unclean spirit to cast them out god has given us power when you understand what obtains from the word of god the, the problem we have is that people are bankrupt of scriptures amen amen people are bankrupt when you are, big, you are given a mathematical question there is something that forms the bedrock the foundation before you proceed it's called formula are you listening it's called what you must once you have the formula you have the answer so there is a formula to living a triumphant life to living an exceptional and outstanding life the scriptures so you cannot engage or go into a warfare do you know there are people that can hold a loaded gun and yet they will still be harassed loaded gun because he doesn't know how to pull it you think it's easy to pull the trigger he doesn't even know how to pull the trigger so there are lots of people as it were who do not know they don't know warfare you see when you approach god's throne and god's presence and you are, a com you, are you are making combat you are praying you want to get married Isaiah 34 verse 10 he says search the book find it he says, and none shall want a mate you tell the lord after the order of Isaiah chapter 34 verse 10 none shall want a mate now watch what the bible says the bible says in psalm chapter 3 from verse 1 to verse 3 psalm 3 1 to verse 3 why how have they increased that trouble me they say for him there is no hope for him in god he says there's no hope for him in god and verse 3 says but thou O lord art a shield for me the glory and the lifter psalm 35 verse 1 people don't like the scripture they feel it's too confrontational but it's the word of god plead my cause oh god 
with them that fight with me. Fight against them. That fight against me. Psalm 144 verse 1. God teaches my, finger, my hands to fight and my fingers to do war. God does not raise, God does not rear domestic children. He raises carnivorous militants. Am I communicating? Carnivorous militants. There are scriptures you hold on to. I'm telling you when you engage into prayer so that you are not bankrupt of what to say. Anytime you are in spiritual warfare, when the angels stand by you, they are not looking at your posture. They are listening to your words. The Bible says, shall give his angels charge. Angels walk with charge, charge. So, standing in God's presence, oh, Father, he is a waste of time. Father, Lord, Father, Lord, look at my tears, look at my tears. And the Bible says, I've never seen Jesus say, be of good tears. You always say, be of good tears, not be of good tears. So, the angel stand, Daniel chapter 10, verse 12. He said to Daniel, From the day you set your heart to chasten thyself before God, thy words we are heard. So, what the angels are listening to is your word. So, all those, um, uh, let's call it speed, speed. In this kingdom, we operate. We don't call speed, speed. Look, me person talk, I must be. No, we know the talk, I must be. We say what we want to happen. My wife knows. You don't tell me there's no food in the house. Where, where did the food go? Don't, don't use such language. Food has finished. Where is it finishing to? It can't finish. If there's nothing there, you say we have this food. This house is full. I understand. There, it, sometimes I remember when I started talking to my wife like that. She didn't understand. You say my husband. It's me and you now. I said no. There are spirits here. He says it's just you and I. You should understand. I said no. There are spirits here. Don't say before the angel it was an error. Oh, I was joking. No. There's nothing like that. The doctor gives you a medical report, say you are sick. That doctor, I'm not sick. It's not possible. I remember one time I was preaching, preaching. I wasn't resting. I was preaching, preaching. So a friend of mine who is a medical doctor met me. He's in Ghana now. And he said, Ah, you are not resting. I wasn't resting. I was preaching. I would land. I would go and see people. Sometimes I'll give them number to 300, 400. I would see everybody one by one. It's midnight. I get back. I pray. He said, We need to check your blood pressure. I said, Sure. So he came the next day and he brought out his feet, tied one nonsense on my hand and was pumping and pumping and pumping and pumping. He hasn't gotten to a level. He said, ha! Ah! Very high. I said, who? I said, who? He said, you. I said, I don't understand. What is high? He said, the pressure. I said, who is applying pressure? Me, I'm just calm like this. You are the one applying pressure. You said, listen, let's check you. You are the one holding that thing. He said, no, 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 no. I know what I'm saying. I said, me too. I know what I'm saying. You are the one applying pressure. Nothing is high. I said, remove this nonsense from my hand. So I went. I took a bottle of water. I said, oh yeah, come and go. He said, no, I need to check this thing. He put it again. He pressed and pressed. He checked. He said, ah, release yourself. I raised myself. He said, calm. I calm. He said, just relax. I said, ah, what's the problem? He said, how come your pressure is normal? Just now it was high. I said, hey, nothing was high. Can I tell you what I did? It was my mouth that rejected it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I went to America one time. You know, I told you I had one, one headache like that. You know the story, right? Okay. So that period, I was going everywhere. You know, when I got to the U.S., I was preaching in America. So I told the doctor, I said, I want to do general body test. That headache was the reason why, but they didn't know. I don't lay hands on you twice or thrice. It's not possible. If I lay hands on you once, you get healed. I lay hands on my head more than one month. <laughs> I lay hands out. In Jesus' name. I remove. Boom. Boom. Ha! Huh? I said, where is this devil from? How? How do you survive? It was a shock to me. When I'm climbing the altar, it stops. When I'm on the altar, I minister well. But as soon as I'm dropping the mic, so what I did, I began to stay longer. On the altar, people are looking at that. Ah, Papa should close as if they know what is happening to me. Nobody, will, nobody will tell me to close. The headache was serious, so I went to America. They checked everything. One of the places I went to, they checked sugar level, check this one, check. 
and the doctor called the other doctor which was dr abraham you know dr abraham he's in america now and he said is he an athlete an athlete is a sports person he said what well, say because every part of his body is functioning i said that's not what i'm looking for what is happening they didn't see nothing at the end one of them said why did you come I went to Dubai to preach. I said, let me just throw and Did all of that. Until one day I went to seek the face of God. Lord, what is happening? My head. I complained to mama. More than a month. I said, only my head. And as I went on my knees, the Lord said, water. Drink water. You are not drinking. And when I checked for almost two months, I was not taking water. You are living puppet. They give you juice. You finish juice. You enter plane juice. They give you juice in the plane. You land at the airport juice. You get to the hotel juice. So I was just a walking juice. I was walking. <laughs> I was walking. <laughs> I was walking back. <laughs> walking. I mean, no natural. You know what I'm talking about? For most two months, no natural glass of water. And God said to me, "This is not prayer. You cannot cheat nature." that day when God told me it was water, I said Lord is that all? Say yes I just took bottled water, I finished one and dropped it, I finished another one and dropped it I finished, the two hooked me, boom God said calm down less than two days but I was okay, from that day because before then mama would tell me, take water, I said no, 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 no. am I a child? Are you to tell me what to do? say sorry sir, but I just said you should be taking water after that day That's why I tell women when you when you you advise your husband, hey, leave him. Don't fight. Tell him no problem, no problem. He will come back. <laughs> Glory be to God. So when God, when God wants to give you a new level, you have to fight for it. Every new level brings a new devil. Every new level brings a new devil. And you must understand that now when the bible is trying to explain to us we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against rulers that is to tell you that not all spirits are on the same level whether you agree or not not all demons operate on the same frequency there are some that are more powerful than some there are some baby demons there are some baby demons now in Matthew 17 when Jesus went up to the, up to the mountain Elijah appeared and who appeared again? Who appeared again? Moses. When they got up to the mountain the Bible says why he was there. His disciples was at the bottom of the mountain and they were struggling to cast out a demon. And Jesus came down and the man ran to Jesus and said I brought them to your disciples they could not cast it out. And Jesus said to them Matthew 17 21 20 and 21 he said this kind oh lord this kind go back go back to verse 20 listen oh listen jesus said unto them because of your unbelief for if you are faith okay if you are faith as a grain of mustard seed you can say to what you can relocate a mountain that's when you have faith. he said but even if you have faith <laughs> this kind is beyond faith. This kind, in other words, this kind. Bring up the translation. Go it not out. This kind of demon does not come out except the man is a fasting machine. Bring verse 21. This kind. Verse 21, verse 21. Go it not out except by fasting. Verse 21. The person on that course needs to fast. I say verse 21. You are bringing verse 2. Verse 21. Message translation, good news translation. Matthew 17. This kind. So that tells you that not all spirits are on the same frequency. There are demons can just say out. But there are some demons that are, they are not just demons. They are principalities. Principalities are prince in their palaces. These are ancient demons. These are gurus. Look at this. TPT. He said, but this kind of demon, very direct. This kind of a kwesu. 
This kind of demon is cast out only through. How many of you believe the words of Jesus? So when anybody is trying to downplay fasting, downplay prayer, have you heard people downplaying prayer? People are praying. They say, leave them. They are always praying. They are always praying. America, do they pray in America? America is developed. You are very stupid. You are stupid. You are stupid. America is not run by, by religious leaders. It's run by good government. America is not run by religious leaders. It's not run by Christians. It's run by good government. The problem of development has nothing to do with church. It is government. It's leaders. All because people want to attack pastors, want to attack Christians. They must look for something to say to downplay Christians. And somebody say, oh, this one, America, uh, China, uh, this. Do they talk about God? Do they... If you study the history of China, you discover that the history of China, check China down their history, they are over 3,000 years. But they became a republic in 1912. 1912. So as we speak now, China is 99 years old. And you are comparing us with China. You are comparing us with America. Say that America don't talk about God. Says who? Even on the dollar, you see in God we trust so church and pastors are not the problem of nigeria it is the bad leaders that are the problem of nigeria did you vote for a pastor even if you say oh pastor is a vice president what's a vice president what what powers does he have his vice he's a deputy president what powers does he have to control so we are not the problem of nigeria we are not the problem actually we are a solution to nigeria The kind of thing the church does. This spirit of what your right hand want to do, your left hand. Should, people don't even understand that scripture. That's why it's making church to hide all the things they do. Anything your right hand is doing, your left hand should not know. Who is, why, why are they quarreling? Why are your hands quarreling? I settle the quarrel between your right and your left hand in Jesus' name. The Bible tells me, let your light show sign before men that men will see your good works. The church, what if you want to know what the church in Nigeria is doing? You'll be amazed. People they are helping. They don't talk about that. Tell you the truth. People they are helping. In this state alone, I was telling mom, our staff strength in our conglomerate, our staff strength is in hundreds. Taking them off the labor market. And somebody will tell you. The church, we are not the problem, we are a light. We are a solution. That doesn't mean that doesn't mean that there are no one or two nonsense going on, people opening prayer houses to collect people's money. But I believe that you have to be greedy to be duped. You have to be greedy. A pastor tell you that I'll just pray for you now, now tomorrow will be a millionaire. Is that not a Yahoo pastor? Why why would you even listen to listen to that kind of person? That's the kind of prayer you want. You come to me now. You say, Papa, take, I want to give you this seed. Pray so that by this time tomorrow, I'll be a millionaire. If it's that easy, don't you know that I will first of all attend to my family members? <laughs> you walk to a man of God, say, do this for me and this for me. And the person you are, the pastor that is praying for you, you look at him, look at his house, look at where he stayed. If that thing is upon him, he has not done it for himself. You are the one who has a problem now. Are you listening? Lift your right and say, In the name of Jesus, I receive fresh baptism to win my battles. I receive fresh baptisms to win my battles. There are things okay, so let's now. I'm just trying to explain that because people have come to a point where they feel there is nothing good in the church. Have you heard people say that? Yes, somebody said, Me, I've stopped going to church. Oh, church does not miss you. You say you stop going to church, so who cares? People have swindled people. The person opens a ministry and that's all he does. Uh -uh. There is a way people will behave. You know where they are going. Person when carry phone, enter toilet. He not plan to come out quicker. 
you, you <laughs> oh, okay sorry sorry but it's the truth <laughs> somebody carry on set and enter toilet you, you stand by you're waiting for him to come out he will chat he will call he will text are you following what i'm saying so there is a way some I, I, I mean somebody didn't know i was a pastor he didn't know i was a pastor this happened years ago he saw me at the park yeah yeah i'm going to get to that because some of them are actually very diabolic he talk 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 i was looking at him because i knew where he was going the next thing mm, you are going to sow money in seven junction he said but i know you are busy now you cannot go to the junction you give me i will help you and i will call several prophets i said no i'm not busy i will go to the I said, just tell me the junction. He said, no, you are very busy. I said, oh God, no, she is my problem. Can I be busy for my problem? No, tell me the junctions. I will go and drop it there by myself. See, I don't want to stress you. I don't want to stress you at all. He said, no, 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 no. What about the seven prophets? I said, no problem. I will get seven others. He said, ah, do you want to handle it yourself? I said, yes. Thank you very much. He was putting me under pressure for my own problem. Those are hungry people. They need help. They need help. So that should not make you feel very bad. Are you listening? Now, when you are doing spiritual warfare, <coughs> first of all, I'm going to sound a little bit selfish. Fight for yourself first before thinking of your family. Person will not sit down where not the lap person. Person where no sit down well, in not the lap person for you to lap someone. <laughs> okay, I'm giving you old, old man parable. Eh? <laughs> when you want to lap somebody, you have to sit well. Uh -huh. So there are so many of us who are busy carrying our family on our head. Meanwhile, we have not sorted out our lives. Why do I have to get into spiritual warfare? I'll give you one today and I'll continue in our next Bible study. Because of your star. Because of your star. Because of your star. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Are you listening to what I'm saying? Every man in life has got a star. A starless man is a useless man. Once you are created on earth, you have a star. God said to Abraham in Genesis 22, 17, he said, thy seed in blessing I will bless you. Genesis 22, 17. And in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and the sand upon the seashore and thy seed shall possess the gate. There is a star of your life. And I'm going to explain what the star represents and what the star means. Because in life, and that is where we have a problem. You see, a lot of people have no understanding of the functionalities of life itself. Numbers chapter 24 verse 17. The Bible makes, it understand that, makes us understand that Jesus was the star, the scepter shall rise out of Israel. The star out of Jacob. The Bible was, was trying to tell, liken soul winners to the stars in Daniel chapter 12 and verse 3. That they that be wise shall shine like the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. When Jesus was born, the Bible said there were certain men who were astrologers. Who are astrologers? Astrologers are those who study the stars, the moon, and by reason of the stars and the moon, they can predict what will happen on the earth. Do you understand that? They use the stars and the moon to predict what will happen on earth. So they study the stars. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 2, these men came and they said, we have seen Jesus. Matthew chapter 2 verse 2, we have seen a star in the east. Matthew 2, 2. Matthew 2, 7. Matthew 2 9. Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star. So, what is your star? Your star is what reveals what you will become. 
The star of Jesus they saw was a revelation of him becoming the king of the Jews. Your star is your future, is your identity, is the unveiling of your destiny. So when you see a man's star by his star, you can tell what it turns out to be. Never assess or intend, never intend to assess a future you are not prepared for. I was talking to one of my sons yesterday on the phone. I was advising him he was about to go into a venture. He was so angry. I would do that. I said, come. This thing you're about to, you know, break church, do this, do that one, expand to prove to the occultic people that God is with you. I said, I understand you're angry. I said, but you see, I've, seen, I've sat down in life and I've thought about many things and I'm seeing life more than you. You see, I told him, I said, Percy, where one summer sort? You go first check where one land. <laughs> Because there is a way. <laughs> this is 33 years I've been holding microphones. So if I talk to you, listen. When you want, tumble, back dive. They call it flip. You first check. Do you understand what I'm saying? I say, so calm down, relax, relax, relax. You don't rush to liquid soup. You calm plan check the app effect this is likely to happen that is likely to happen prepare for it prepare for backlash before you take this step prepare for backlash prepare and secure that you take a move if you don't have the capacity for the backlash don't even take the move are you following me don't even take the move you have to be prepared for it you have to be properly prepared for it because uh, there will be any reactions and the reaction will come when you least expect so you have to be prepared hello so the stars whatever happens to a man is determined by the functionality of a star your star reveals your glory first corinthians 15 41 your star, there's the glory of the star, the glory of the moon. He said, But each star differs in glory. There's one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, another glory of the stars. One star different from another in glory. There are different kinds of stars. There are shooting stars. Boom. Those are the ones you just see from nowhere. Boom. There are people that have such stars. Shooting stars. Boom. You never heard of them before. All of a sudden, phew shooting stars shooting stars i'm telling you about warfare concerning your star but i have to explain your what the star is so that when we begin to connect it to prayer you have a proper understanding there are twinkling stars very inconsistent they twinkle they twinkle they are not doing bad they are not doing good just on the average realm there are shining stars they shine in the midst of darkness, there are falling stars. There are superstars. Superstars. And there is one who we'll called the day star. First Peter 119. The day star. And also there are wandering stars. James chapter 1, Jude chapter 1, verse 13. Wandering stars are people who are inconsistent, whose life is full of shame. James 1 13. Their life is full of shame. They are called wandering stars. Your star reveals your destination. Your star reveals your assignment. Your star unveils your assignment, your accomplishment. So the star of Jesus was that he was born to be what? To be what? King. They said, Who where is he? That was born king of the Jews. For we have seen his star. So by his star, we can now define what he is born to be. So when your star is revealed, I told you the story of a woman who gave birth to a child. And she was nursing the child. She couldn't leave the child for one minute because the child was crying. All of a sudden, a friend of hers came. Less than two minutes, another friend came. She said, I thank God, you poor too. Can you look after the baby? Let me just rush and shower so one of them carried the child the other was cuddling the child 
she ran to the bathroom the next thing they were fighting the child was crying they were fighting themselves what's going on not fully done she ran out what's happening now he said can you imagine can you imagine this child has seven star she took five and gave me only two the woman said star five two he said at least she can take four and give me three the mother said wait now wait we star he said this child now we saw the star is seven she took five she gave me two my child said yes she just went and locked the door say today people will die here you collect we star from who There are, there, are, there are enemies of the star. There are star hunters. In warfare, one of the things you must do is to handle star hunters. They are soothsayers. They are magicians. They are sorcerers. One of the things Daniel had to deal with in his day was astrologers. Daniel was confronted with them. Daniel chapter 4 verse 3. Daniel chapter 5 verse 7. Daniel was confronted with astrologers. Daniel 1 verse 20. Daniel 2 verse 27 Daniel was confronted with astrologers these are men that study the star by reason of what they now how many of you this has happened to you before let's get practical how many of you have walked on the road you are walking on the road you have seen somebody stop you they'll look at you and they start telling you about your life has it happened to anybody here and whatever they'll tell you is accurate huh they'll tell you things they'll tell you things you're like what they are not pastors so you know what they are those are astrologers they can look at your palm and they'll look up they'll start talking they are not walking by the spirit of god it is their father the devil who caused your problem that is revealing it to them the problem you're going through is their father the devil and when it's time for solution they start telling you strange things when you get back carry rain water the first this one that comes are you have you had things like that that's where you now know that this one is not of god so they will talk to you accurately you can go to some places they will tell you everything about yourself you say what when it's time for solution am i communicating when it's time for solution prescription for solution that is when you know that these ones have no connection to god sorcerers one of the things Paul had to deal with in Acts chapter 19, the Bible said Paul had to deal with sorcerers. He was casting out devils. Then one man who has a son called Skeva. Sorry, one man called Skeva. He had seven sons. I told you the story that this man, the Bible said one Skeva. The seven sons will look at Paul. Paul was casting out devils. Their father was a sorcerer. They were not connected to anything no satan no god there are people that live themselves like that i don't put i not put my for anything my mind clean you are a joker say me as you see so my mind clean i don't i don't wish people evil i don't think bad of anybody okay now this man they look at what paul was doing paul was casting out devils casting out devils casting out demons from people they say ah, we are going to try this thing now if you want to try why not try with fever why not try with leg pain they wanted to experiment jesus is lord and they decided it's like somebody who wants to you know start life when you want to start um you want to start english that's what they call premier right they give you premier queen premier they didn't start from there they wanted to rehearse they went to carry a madman what a wrong practical the bible said this man was mad and if that was all it would have been good they would have prayed for him on the street no they carried him into a house that was even understandable they locked the door now now 
you see that, that madman was just an agent of the devil when they were carrying him he didn't react <laughs> when they carried him to the house he didn't react he waited for them to lock the door <laughs> when they locked the door the bible says and the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped go to verse go to verse 15 go to verse 15 go to verse 14 okay go to verse 13 something i'm looking for and certain vagabond jews exhausted took upon themselves to call over them which had evil spirit in the name of jesus they took upon themselves it was a profession and we see that happen today when somebody fails in certain area of life you will say i think god is calling me say i think the reason i'm not doing well is because i have no answer they call i've been running from god run when god called us we are not allowed to run these days people say i've been running from god run if god really calls you where can you run to no in trying to run from god you are running to god in trying to run from god you are actually running to god when Jonah was trying to run from God, he didn't know he was running to God. As Jonah was thrown from the boat, there was a whale with his mouth open. So it's either you go God's way or you enter God's whale. <laughs> there is God's way and there is God's whale. But that was still God at work. You know what God did? The people of Nineveh, they worship the marine God. They go to the river every time and they worship the river. They bow to their gods. Jonah thought he was running from God, but was actually running to God. So, the, the fish swallowed Jonah for three days. Jonah was inside the belly of the fish. That was a type of Christ that he will be buried in the belly of the earth for three days, and he will come out. So, Jesus was in the, um, Jonah was in the belly of the fish, and the people of Nineveh went to the, the river, and they were worshipping their God. All of a sudden, the fish came out, opened his mouth, and brought out as soon as Jonah came out, they started worshiping Jonah. Worshiping Jonah, God knew that was the only way to get the attention of the people of Nineveh. So he had to make sure it was a fish, not a cow. He had to make sure it was a fish, not a snake. So the fish swallowed Jonah. As soon as he opened his mouth, Jonah walked out and said, Repent. They said, We hear you. We hear you. They thought it was their God who had sent a message to them, not knowing it was the most high. Thinking you are running from God, you are running to God. You are running to God. You can't run from God. You can't run from God. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Let me tell you something about how these people operate. Star hunters, they know and can read your stars. Stop all this bra this bragging. My child of God, nothing can happen to you. Listen. I know you are protected but be wise i know you are secured but don't take chances they can read your star they read are you are you more anointed than jesus your your, your physical imagination was the copulation of a man and a woman jesus there was no copulation of a man he was 100 percent man 100 percent god they read the star where is he that is born the king of the jew we have seen his star so no matter who you are they can read it they defined it and also they, read, they saw the star from the east far away from him so they can even sight a star from afar it can be spotted somebody can be in america in london and from there can tell you what you're saying so distance is not a problem to star hunters which are getting something star can be stolen stars can be stolen stars can be weakened Stars can be weakened. 
Like the star of Joseph, it was weakened because he was talking too much. The things he didn't even understand about himself, he was talking about it. So they were weakening the star. They made sure he landed in the, in the, in the pit. Later he landed in the That was a weakened star until God showed up for him. Stars can be weakened. And that's the generation we are living in now. It's not every revelation that you must share. There are some things God will show you. How can what God show you, you don't understand it? You expect somebody else to understand it. Can you imagine somebody will tell you a revelation, tell you and tell you and tell you, say, this revelation, I just see so. I dream. I climb up. Maybe six. One, four. Two, stand. I come the four. I come up. I come up with my eye. Wait in me. <laughs> what does it mean? So one day somebody was telling me a dream he had in the office. 14 minutes. In the dream, he slept and dreamt. How can somebody dream in a dream? He said he slept in the dream. He now went somewhere. Then I went in. I was just looking at him. He explained the dream. I said, one night. He said, Papa, calm down, calm down. When he thought, 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 he finished. He said, what does it mean? <laughs> I said, I don't know. <laughs> this one is fever. You have fever. All your dream don't make sense. Dream of Philly Station. You buy fuel. You now enter the car. You continue on the journey again. <laughs> I said, you have fever. I'm, you're, you're, I'm having a headache. There are things God tells you until you have a proper understanding of it don't voice it because god can show you something in sequence he can show you now don't be in a hurry to share it keep praying he can show you again tomorrow and sometime after three four five days before you are able to put all of them together to understand what god is actually saying and this is the problem we have you see god can show you today what he wants to do in your life in 20 years time but he will show you today as if it's tomorrow so if you're not careful that's why some people have run to become pastors some have run to start businesses run to do things and they spend 10 years of their life in the wilderness and they start binding demons binding no the problem you have was not demons you were premature how many of you know that if you carry a day old chick you know chick a little um, chicken, a day old chick. You carry it and you start speaking in tongue. Grow! 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 By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Grow! By the grace I'm under. Grow! It's not going to grow because that is not the process. So when people are not yet matured, Everybody's in a hurry to do some business, hurry to enter and start a project, hurry to do one or two things, and you're not even cut out and mature yet for it. The hair, so long as a child, does not differ from a servant. Galatians 4, verse 1. Although it's a lot of all, stays that two tutors and teachers to the time appointed of the Father. Amen. Star can be diverted. Star can be diverted. Okay. Let me say this. This ministry believes in deliverance. A child's placenta or what they call umbilical cord can be used to control his destiny. Where was yours buried? Who dedicated you when you were born? There are some of you as grown as you are now till now you have not been dead. We will carry you. <laughs> Today we are going to carry you. After this service I will tell ushers they will carry you. Will wrap you inside one wrapper. <laughs> I will dedicate you. <laughs> Some have not been dedicated, even now. They were never dedicated. What is the meaning of your name? If your name doesn't make sense, change it. There's a name that doesn't make sense. And there's some of us who just pick some names because they sound nice. Anastasia. Anastasia. If you know what anesthetics mean, you understand. Some people just speak some name because they sound nice. So you've got to have your name needs to have meaning. 
once it sounds stupid or it doesn't have a good meaning no drop it hello a star can be stolen there are areas someone's hair can be used to divert the star and that's why i told people there are four major areas you have concentrated demons i'm sorry not all of them but majorly number one markets if god opens your eyes in the spirit you'll see the witchcraft trans that the witchcraft transaction going in the market number two saloons that's why wise people are spiritual will go with their own comb go with their own stuff finish give it to them don't take it and start cleaning in this church i've picked out somebody by prophecy who the lord said he has a barbing salon where they shave their hair and they use the he gathers people's hair and takes to the you remember that and the young man walked out number three maternities When your wife is in labor about to give birth as a man you need to begin to pray all of these things are not things to make you afraid they are just things to make you aware don't be deceived wait the person no no you're not the killer now you're the killer my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge what what somebody does not know will not kill the person that's what kills the person if you knew it, it won't kill you. They're destroyed. There are things we've seen. A pastor, actually, a pastor and the wife, they were having lots of issues. The pastor's life was, you know, zigzag. So the wife was confused. All of us were able me, I was super confused prayed for him he has ministry ministry will start it will close today we get just get angry we'll tell the wife to go after a while okay come back his life was just disorderly there were so many issues which i can't even get into one day i got so interested i told him i said be on your way i want to see you that day i was so interested it's when he came i was in Benin. then he came i said let's go somewhere we drove to a pastor's office I told the pastor to excuse us. I locked the door. I told him, remove your shirt. He said, sir. I said, remove your shirt. I pulled up my shoes, took up my stockings. I said, give me your hand. We started praying. We started praying. More than 30 minutes, going to 45 minutes, going to an hour, we are praying. I said, until God show me what your problem is today. Both of us will not leave this office. I said, because this is your life. It's a mockery to me. We started 20 minutes, 30 minutes. I was getting I felt the presence of God. And the Lord said, I should see that I sat there. And the Lord opened my eyes. I saw that when he was born, the person that did, you know they call on Mugo, was the grandmother. The grandmother was actually the one they gave the umbilical cord to go and bury. And the Lord showed me, while I was praying, I saw a woman. When I sat there, I saw a woman open a black bulletin bag and brought out things inside. I didn't see what was inside. And she put them in the fire, in the pot, and was cooking them. So I didn't understand. So I asked him a question. Where's your mom? He said, the mom is in Bielsa. He talked, talked, talked. I said, okay, can I talk to her? He called. The mom was not too fine. I prayed. I said, mommy, do you remember? He said, yeah, he don't tell. He don't tell. He don't tell. He don't tell. After a while, she stopped. That she was going to call us back. She called us. She didn't see, talk to the grandmother because that one had passed out. She spoke to that one's younger sister. Who told her what that one did? What was the story? When she called back, the mother was crying. And the mother said that that one said she was in the house. The grandmother brought something, the politin bag. The day the child was born, he boiled the, the thing she brought and ate it. So I said, here! Yeah! I got it. I told the boy, I said, wear your shirt. He started crying. I said, no, it's finished. What is revealed is redeemed. We began to renounce. I heard as I said this after me, say this after me, say this after me, say this after me. He was saying it. Boom! That was an open destiny. Life turned around. Today is sick, tomorrow is well. Everything about him was, was upside down. But life changed. Because that thing that was. I told you I was praying for a lady. I said, Come out. She came out. I said, The Lord said the dog is dead. 
you may have heard me give that testimony the dog is dead I didn't know what I was saying me I didn't know but I just know I heard dog is dead say the dog is dead she said eh? amen I said the dog is dead amen you know there's some things I'll say I'm going to the altar I say wait 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 till be this now what have I said <laughs> what have I even said so I said that she got a visit on Monday after the service she got a visit grandmother came and began to apologize to her the herbalist also came with her and was apologizing what was the apology when the girl was born they projected her stars into a dog now that dog grew to like five six years they bought another one transferred that girl beautiful girl but once people start talking about marriage she's not interested she starts sleeping with their friends what was in her a dog was projected into her and she was projected to the dog she had lost relationship because something just comes on her to be promiscuous and that was what god saw that night and said the dog is dead but it happened at infancy so there are so many people today are you ready to pray there are so many people whose life have been tempered with stars can be exchanged first kings chapter three there were two men that are children the bible says one of them slept on a child and the child died oversleep can kill your dream oversleep there are people that sleep so much till, they, till something dies sleep 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 you sleep so much in the night you will sleep early morning you have early morning sleep then you have afternoon you call that one siesta your mates are seen Angel Gabriel you are seen Esther you are seen Esther others are seen Angel Gabriel others are seen Angel Michael you, you are seen Esther she said no 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 papa no I don't joke with my money sleep how can papa tell somebody to be praying around three that time when sleep they sweet There are people that there is there is there is a spirit of sleep that's on their life they can stand and sleep they can stand and while they are standing they are gone some can sleep with their eyes open <laughs> they are sleeping get to the room carry them from a story building in their sleep and rush them outside from a story building. release them they will land on the ground hey <laughs> is that bad lighting my eyes lord psalm 13 verse 3 lest i sleep the sleep of death there are some sleep that leads to death you gotta pray am i talking to someone here when the star is tempered with destiny number one destiny is swapped destiny is swap when destiny is swap i'm talking of a spoke of star hunters what do they do they temper with your star and when the star is tempered with destiny is swapped destiny is swapped what does it mean for destiny to be swapped a person begins to serve what was created or who was created to serve him destiny is swapped let me show you let me show you something let me surprise you peter was not originally supposed to be the head of the church. In fact, after Jesus died, it was James, the brother of Jesus, that took over from Peter. But while Jesus was around, Peter was like the boss, the deputy to Jesus. That was not the original plan. The original plan was to be Judas. Are you listening? Because then in Israel, when a man dies, it is his brother that raises seed for him. Jesus and Judas were first cousins that's one of the reasons jesus entrusted the cash to judas can i say this to you you don't give money to be kept by a man you don't trust there must be trust before you entrust so judas had messed up that's why jesus came out and threw it open who do men say i am anybody who gets this today becomes the rock so there was nothing like oh it was peter of all people peter was not so peter was the least qualified because peter he talked before he think peter will finish talking before he think 
Jesus said, um, Lazarus is sick. After Jesus said, Lazarus is dead, Peter said, Let's go and die with him. Does that make sense? <laughs> Let's go and die with him. I mean, it doesn't. There are things. Peter's mouth was. And he can lie. Peter lied. Cockro. Peter lied to a point, even animals reacted. He said, I don't know him. I've never met him. Peter started swearing. That is, if he has ever seen Jesus, let Moto jam him on the spot. Cock said, Kukuruku. <laughs> All right. I'm wasting your time. Destiny swapped. When a star is tempered with, there is endless struggle. That's when people keep hoping and hoping till old age. Hoping and hoping and hoping and hoping it go better. It will be good. Someday it will be good. Someday it will be good. Till old age. They are still hoping. That shall not be your portion. I don't like your amen. That shall not be your portion. 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 Endless struggles. There are people that struggle endlessly. You know, there's something I'm looking for. There's something I wrote down. Oh, maybe I'll, it will come before the end of the service. There are people that struggle and struggle and struggle and struggle till death. They start telling you about their dreams. All their dreams. That's why it's now. Ecclesiastes 12 1 says, Remember now your creator in the days of your youth. Don't wait. Do it now. Do it now. The word man, the word man is a breakdown of seasons. The word man is a breakdown of seasons. M A N. M means morning. A means afternoon. N means night. So as a man, you are connected to times and seasons. So you cannot waste time. You cannot joke around. You don't look for a black goat at night. If you want to see a black, you want to find a black goat, you look for it in the day. Because when it gets dark, the darkness and the color of the goats are of the same semblance. Everything you must do, do it now. Do it now. There are people that struggle and struggle and struggle. No, nothing changes. I decree. If your star has been tempered and you are struggling endlessly, that power is broken. When a star is tempered with, there is contradiction. Take your seat. I'll round up now. I'm taking your time. There is contradiction. That was what happened in the life of Jabez. Jabez, 1 Chronicles 4, 9 and 10, was more honorable than his brethren. But his mother called his name Jabez. The mother tempered with him. Was more honorable than his brethren. But the mother called his name Jabez, saying, I bear him in sorrow. I bear him in sorrow. There are people with degrees. Have you seen people with very educated? Sometimes when I see people who, who are very educated and poor, it becomes a mockery on education. Someone is about to buy a bike and he's a professor. He's speaking English. Okada, can you take me from one end to another end? He said, how are we going? Okay, when I bought your bike now, we are going to navigate to the left then we are going to navigate to the right then there is a turn to the left and it's adjacent good English phonetic good power of diction master the schemes of public speaking stranded 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 beautiful lady single not just single rejected 
I've seen people, some children walk to me and say, Dad, look at me, no man ask me out. And me, I'm confused. You like this, nobody? No, sir. The men are not seeing what she carries. You think it's by degree? It's by looks? You think it's by looks? Honey, I was telling a young man, I said, if it is bears that give wisdom, goats would have been prophets. it <laughs> have you seen every goat is bearded you see a goat with long beards full full with all the beards the goat is still <laughs> if it's beards that give wisdom a goat will be a prophet you will know tomorrow know next year know everything with all the decrees you think that's what there are people today you look at them they don't look outstanding as it were but they get married with all the terrible character they get married and there are some it's not by power not by mind something tempered with something something tempered with something you know as i'm talking right now you know that this thing the way your life is going is not normal something inside you knows that's why you will pray today something inside you knows that something is wrong somewhere a young girl in London told me, he said she had gotten four um, proposers and the four of them had deformed people. He said that somebody, I'm not mocking, please don't get me wrong, I'm not mocking anybody. He said that somebody will come to her like that. He said one day somebody stopped her, she came down from the vehicle and she was about to pick something, somebody stopped her. She came, so the guy was coming. Wait! Look at her. <laughs> I just saw you. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> I like you. <laughs> she didn't know what to say. Now, I'm not mocking anybody. But she said, one, two, three. There must be a physical deformity. So I said to her, it's not a coincidence. There is something that you are attracting that is incomplete. Are you listening to what I'm saying? There's something that's incomplete. A pastor was preaching in a church in Benin. On the altar, he ran mad. Altar. He started talking out of when talking. You know, initially, remember, I said, Amen, Amen from Amen. They were looking at him. Uh -uh. And the, the, the annoying protocols. That should have bundled Pastor from what I They thought he was in the spirit. They're looking at him. The man dropped mic. Somebody they should approach and carry on the head and tell people, be praying, be praying, be praying. <laughs> the man come more cloth. Ah, the need was serious. They kept him in chain. When I was praying for him, by the spirit of God. I could see into his mother's family. The mom died mad. The one following the mom died mad. As we were talking, the only uncle from the mom's, the, the mother's side was mad. And I said, what is wrong with this boy? Why would you climb the altar when you have not handled where you are coming from? Let me say this to you. Sit down. There are some things in my life that I knew I never preached them until two years ago, three years ago. I had to handle them in my family. Then in my family, traveling abroad was not where yeah, you only go to Mecca. No, if Mecca, if you go like this, visa is once. The only auntie I have that went to France had stroke. So when I fasted and prayed, I went to the embassy. They didn't give me a visa. I thought it was natural until I decided to do an X-ray in my. Family. Ah, only Mecca. You see a small boy, allergy. Small boy, allergy. This one, allergy. If it's Mecca, you go straight. Safe trip. But say London, America. No. So I knew something was wrong. I began to break. I began to break. I began to break. I began to break. I'm telling you true life stories. I began to break. I began to break. I began to break. The first time I went for a UK visa, the woman did not even check my document. So passport, Johnson Suleiman. Mm, suicide bomber, suicide bomber, suicide. 
I said, my, my they said, no, no, I don't need to say that. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You can. And I got there speaking in tongues. Oh, and got there speaking in tongues. When I left there, I said, what is happening? Good. Ah, what's going on? When I sat down, look at your life. What is happening now is not strange. You can see traces. Look at your maternal family, your paternal family. You can see traces. A star has been tempered with. Something has been affected. Contradiction. It was created to carry glory. It's like the man in Acts chapter 3 that was at the gates of beautiful. His life was not beautiful. When, when your star is tempered, the spirit of contradiction and controversy, Isaiah 34 verse 8, you know, when the spirit of controversy hits a man, there are people, how many of you know, that there are people that walk up to you and they will tell you to borrow them money. They'll tell you to loan them money. They'll mention an amount. You are confused. You are wondering how they see you. You can't even say you don't have. When you say you don't have, they get angry. Say you have. You don't want to help me. You know why? You look like money. It's a destiny. But how come there is no money? There are people, any cloth you give them to wear, say, help me test this thing. Once they wear it, it looks like their own. Say, ah! Like saying, I'm me, they sew this cloth for. Say, hey, yeah, it fits you. Pull up, pull up. You look like it. It's God. That, God has seen that there are so many generations tied to your loins. But there is a power listen you are pregnant with the future and nothing can stop your delivery everyone under the sound of my voice everything God has said you will be you will become it I say 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 you will become it be upstanding be upstanding be upstanding you want to assess your star be born again number one be born again you must be born again you must be born again number two your eyes must be open number one you must be born again what does it mean to be born again to be born again is not to confess your sin is to confess Christ confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior Romans 10 10 with the heart man believed to righteousness with the mouth confession is made unto salvation being born again is about Jesus confessing Jesus when you, when you start confessing your sin you cannot stop confessing when you confess Jesus he comes in and takes away your sins and the Bible says that number two you must have open eyes that's what I said your eyes must be open Ecclesiastes 6 verse 9 better is the sight of the eyes than the wandering of the desire Psalm 34 verse 5 they look up to him and their faces were lightened and they were not ashamed Psalm 119 verse 18 Open thou my eyes That I may behold wondrous things Out of thy law Your eyes must be open To get that You must be wise You must pray for the spirit of wisdom James 1 5 Does anyone lack wisdom? Let him ask of God Who giveth liberally Wisdom to know when to cut off from certain people Wisdom to know when to cut off from certain places Wisdom to know when to speak When to be quiet it's not every question you must answer are you listening it's not every question you must answer it's not every one you must sit down with 30 friends will not be friends in 30 years destiny will separate them choices will separate them you are you are, you are responsible for the choices you make the choices you make today will make you tomorrow be wise Jesus, the son of the living God. Joseph, at infancy. I'm talking of Messiah. I'm talking of divinity. At infancy. They, they withdrew him from the scene. At infancy. Why? Because he was vulnerable. There are times to hide. There are times to disappear. People will not know you are around. Lock your door. Stay indoors. Turn off your phone. Let it appear like you traveled. Ah, you come and say, Where have you been? I just did. Where did you go? 
I'm just fine. By the time the person is insisting, you have spotted one enemy. You have just spotted one. Be wise. Then you need to be you need to be intimate with the Holy Spirit. Your intimacy with the Holy Spirit is what helps you to be abreast of the th of the things of the kingdom. Then you must ask for restoration in case it has been tampered with. Are you blessed today? Are you blessed today? We are going to pray today. We are going to pray. Anyone who star this is warfare now. Who star has been diverted, weakened, exchanged, stolen, be restored. Anyway, my star has been diverted weakened stolen be restored be restored be restored your emancipation is the emancipation of a generation say my father my father in the name of jesus as i pray anyway my star has been stolen weakened diverted be restored be restored be restored be restored Open your mouth and turn it to prayer. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. 
Rock 